As mentioned, and as we all know, today is not only the first Sunday in May, it is the first day in May. And it has been and continues to be a significant date around the world for many reasons. For instance, in some countries today is Workers' Day or International Workers' Day. And like Labor Day here and in Canada, it commemorates uh, workers and the labor movement with a holiday and parade. So there's a lot going on today. And, but May Day has ancient roots in astronomy because it is the halfway point between the spring equinox and the summer solstice. And it has ancient roots in agriculture and pagan and Wicca practices. In days gone by, there were May Day festivals with, filled with song and dancing and around a bonfire, celebrating the sown fields that were just beginning to sprout, and wildflowers and green branches were woven into garlands that were worn in the hair, and May baskets filled with flowers and baked goods were given to loved ones. And the cattle were driven into the pasture, and uh, along with uh, the doors that were decorated with yellow flowers, the livestock wore yellow May flowers too. So it was a great celebration. And even today, some children and adults dance around a decorated maypole carrying, uh, holding on to beautiful colored ribbon. I know when I was uh, a little girl, we did that in school, and it brings back happy memories still. But you probably gathered from the way Reverend Kim introduced the title of my talk today, the May Day we're going to be talking about is none of the above. In fact, the May Day that we're going to be talking about has nothing to do with the month of May. It comes from the French expressions veni me du, or me di, which means help me or give me a hand. Now, I've always felt I may not have mentioned it to any of you, but I have to be careful about uh, the talk titles that I choose because it seems over the years that I usually get to live them before I get to speak them. And I got to tell you, even up until late yesterday afternoon, I had a couple of May Day experiences. And as you know, May Day is recognized as a distress call that's used as a signal of a life-threatening emergency. And it's usually done from a ship or a plane, but in other situations, too. Now, Reverend Kim, it must be said three times. Mayday, mayday, mayday. That, well, yes, it is. <laughs> mayday, mayday, mayday is the title of my talk. I may have left it out of my notes to you. But it needs to be said three times. Um, so that it's not mistaken for another word or, or phrase. And um, a distress call is given absolute priority over any other transmission. Now, a distress call is never mistaken by the universe as anything but a distress call, even if we just say it once because it's not received, or twice, <laughs> because it's not received in words. It's received vibrationally from us to the universe. And even though it doesn't have priority over any other vibrational transmissions that we emit, the universe is always there to help us. 
is always responds to us with the help we need. Whether it's healing in our body or the resolution of a challenging situation or an increase in our finances, the answer from the universe is always, I'm here, I've got your back. Now we read in the book of Psalms, I will lift up mine eyes to the mountain from whence comes my help. Now, if like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, we were to click the heels of our metaphysical ruby slippers, and you guys got them too, and instead of saying mayday three times, we were to close our eyes and say, home, 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 instead, we'd be uplifted to that high, holy place within us that we've never truly left. That mountaintop of peace where our inner being sits and where every need is met. So the question is, how strong is our faith and trust that the universe has our back? Our life manifests according to what we believe we'll receive. So, do we truly believe that when we ask God for help, that the help will come? Do we truly believe that our inner being, our spirit, knows what we want and is always there to give us a hand by getting it for us? If we believed, we would receive all that we need in the moment we need it. We'd be able to stay calm and peaceful in the midst of chaos in our individual life or in the world around us. Michael Beckwith reminds us that even in the midst of chaos, there is always a higher order seeking to emerge. But we can only experience the emergence of that higher order by first allowing peace to emerge in our mind. When we're peaceful and calm and quiet in our mind, we can more easily feel our intuition and we're more aware of inner guidance. Abraham Hicks tells us that when we listen for it, our inner being will guide us step by step, segment by segment, moment by moment. But we must tap into that high vibrational energy of the universe first with this important key. The key is letting ourselves feel the unrestricted peace that allows us to be divinely guided. It's choosing to feel good in whatever way we can before the good we want appears in form so that we resonate with the good that's already present ready to emerge as a higher order in our life. Choosing peace in our mind, choosing calm in our emotions, choosing to feel good is often a choice we have to make over and over again in a stressful situation until it stays with us, or rather until we stay with it. But even though peace of mind and feeling good is a spiritual option for us every moment, no matter what's happening, sometimes we opt out. And we freak out instead when something happens or is threatening to happen that we don't want. So we might want to check in with ourselves 
to see how much of what happens in our life feels like a life-threatening emergency when it happens, and if not life-threatening, stressful and distressful nonetheless. How often do we send out a mayday signal to the universe, but stay so stressed out that our divine rescuer can't get to us because there's too much turbulence within us? Mayday, mayday, mayday can become a mantra. And when we live on our last nerve, the next thing can send us over the edge. And it can be the littlest thing. And then we may snap at people, or we might break down in tears, or we might make irrational decisions, or we may just stay stuck like a deer in the headlights. It's easy to be stressed in this world. There seems to be so many threats to our well-being, to our health, to our safety, to our finances, to those we love. And there seems to be so many important things that we need to get done with so little time to do them that it's hard to know what to stress about first, and so we just stress out in general. When we're in a constant state of anxiety in our life, when we're continually anxious about our well-being and the well-being of those we love, when we're stressed out about the world that we live in, our distress signals can become so familiar to us that we're not aware that peace of mind is even an option for us. Though a higher order is always available to us, we become unavailable to it. Now, maybe we'd like to believe otherwise. But if we still believe that while we're living this life, we are separate from God, and that there's a chance that God won't hear our prayer, if we believe that we are separate from the source of life that takes care of all life, including our own, then why wouldn't we freak out? And why shouldn't we freak out? Why wouldn't we believe that we are alone and on our own most of the time to make things happen for us and the world around us using the limitations of time and energy and resources and abilities? But one of Paramahansa Yogananda's affirmations was this. God is the shepherd of my restless thoughts. He will lead them to his abode of peace. It can be one of ours too. But in order for us to be led to peace, we must be willing to let go of all the drama in this life. No matter how curious we might be about it, no matter how much of it is going on all at once, and no matter how personal it may get. It's up to us to provide a peaceful environment within us that allows a higher order, a more orderly order, a solution-filled order 
to emerge in us and to come to us so that it can move through us and into the situations in our life and into the world around us. Ramana Maharshi said, if anyone masters the peace of being, it will spread effortlessly on the part of the individual. When the person himself is not at peace, how can he spread peace in the world? Now sometimes the craziness of our life makes us feel alive. All the hustle and bustle of getting her done makes it us feel like we have a purpose, makes us feel purposeful. We postpone peace in our mind and calm in our emotions because we're busy. And because we don't believe that peace and calm are the energies that get things done. But peace and calm are not motionless. Peace and calm flow within the energy of the life force that is ever moving and ever creating within and through all that live, including all of us. Peace and calm is the presence of spirit in us. It's our connectedness to the life force that would Move us forward in peace and joy and health and happiness if we would value it enough to stop resisting it. It is we who must calm our mind and become peaceful. So the holy action and the holy movement of spirit can move within us and guide us. Nazar Gadada Maharaj wrote, Stillness and silence are not inactive. A flower fills the space with perfume. A candle with light. They do nothing, but they change everything in their mere presence. When we're freaking out, when our emotions are on overload and our thoughts are tangled up in confusion, our presence wherever we are only makes things worse. The more we try to control something, the more that something controls us. The more we try to figure things out with our already overstimulated head, the more confused we get. An outcome that we don't want is inevitable because the unreleased stress within us continues to send a vibrational distress signal to the universe over and over again and keeps our mind filled with the noise of it so that we're not aware of the help that is available to us in each moment. We go right on experiencing more confusion in our mind and more stressful experiences in our life. Control is based on fear. When we let go of fear, which is to say when we let go of the belief that we are separate and on our own and we have to make things happen by fighting with or fighting against whatever it is, if we could let that go, the life force within us would naturally flow to us with powerful, effortless ease. We can teach ourselves to be peaceful. 
and to peacefully trust that no matter how bad things may look, and even though we don't see how there could be a positive outcome, the answer is there anyway. Eckhart Tolle wrote, being at ease with not knowing is crucial for answers to come to you. Because we are one with the all knowing that is God. Our needs are met even before we know what most of them are. If we get our little-mindedness out of the way, the natural power within us would get her done, every time and in every way. The spiritual teacher Robert Adams wrote, as you get yourself out of the way, the same power that appears to grow the grass, that causes the flowers to bloom, that grows oranges on orange trees will take care of you. You have nothing to fear. When we're willing to let go of our fearful human reactions and respond as the spiritual beings we are. We become filled with a peaceful trust that the source of all life is taking care of our life. Our mayday, mayday, mayday dissolves into a spiritual communion of appreciation with the love that is loving us always. And our mantra becomes thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do through me. Namaste. All right. Well, this is the time of our service when we say thank you. When we say thank you for being beautiful you, thank you for showing up and showing it off. Thank you for your loving support uh, of this message, and thank you for wanting to be a part of it. It's a beautiful thing, and thank you for being here in the, in the sanctuary this morning, and thank you for showing up at live stream, and thank you if you watch this a little later. Thank you for huh, just caring about the spiritual beings we are and the spiritual world we live in. So thank you for your financial support that keeps this message going, that allows us to stay together and share it and experience it together. And if you don't know, how to support LEC financially, then our lovely treasurer will tell you how. Jamie Phillips. Good morning. Good morning. Um, if you're watching uh, by a live stream, you can donate uh, via Facebook. At, our address is facebook.com forward slash Life Enrichment Center. You can go to our website, lecflint.com, and look for the Contribute button and click on that. You can go to PayPal directly, and our uh, PayPal email address is 2512, let me start that again, lec2512 at gmail.com. And you can always send us a check to the Life Enrichment Center, 
2512 South Die Road, Flint, Michigan, 4532. And if you're here in the sanctuary, I'd like to invite Janice to come forward, and she'll be taking your offertory while we listen to Daniel Namad and Nemo Patel doing grateful. And after that, Reverend Stephanie will come up with a gratitude prayer. Thank you. <laughs> 